On this video, you will notice that I'm wearing a new male shirt. This was custom made by Viking Merchant. This is not a sponsored mention. I'm just a happy customer. If you wanted to get custom made mail, I strongly recommend Viking Merchant. You'll find a link in the description. Ask of Davide Maggi and tell him that the Metatron has sent you. Grazie Davide. Hey noble ones, welcome back to my channel. This is War to Misinformation. Literally, in the last few weeks I've spotted, and I'm not joking, 10 to 15 articles repeating the same silly thing. Medieval knight, you say? You thought it was going to be an armoured man on top of a majestic steed, but oh no! It was a tiny puny my mini pony! Yes, one large pizza. I need it. A few minutes later. This video is not sponsored by... Without further ado, let's read the articles together, but I'm warning you. This stuff is mental. Medieval knights rode tiny horses into battle. War horses in the Middle Ages were tinier than you think. Popular culture depicts medieval war horses as majestic creatures, tall, muscular, and powerful, with shiny knights at top. But new research shows that the steeds of the Middle Ages were likely much smaller than we would expect. Now, already, if you are in any way, shape, or form familiar with medieval iconography, including manuscript illuminations or statuary, you will notice a disconnect. Because, I mean, if that's a pony, then, ladies and gentlemen, Sir Geoffrey Luttrell was a halfling. Everywhere you look in medieval iconography, there are horses, and I mean, that shouldn't surprise us. The horse was a prime factor when it comes to medieval warfare, and yet, whenever we look at iconography, the adjectives that I would use precisely to describe those sorts of horses are tall, majestic, muscular, and powerful. So how do you explain that? A team of zoo archaeologists in the United Kingdom analysed 1,964 horse bones from 100 71 different archaeological sites dated between 300 and 1650 common era. The horses of the Middle Ages they found were much slighter than their modern day descendants, usually no more than pony size. Their findings were published last August in the International Journal of, however you read that word, Osteoarchaeology. Now already the first thing that comes to my mind as I read this is I really need to go check the study proper. But the first massive red flag that I see here is the following. The lack of the site location. Are these sources from all over Europe or are they from a specific single location? But most importantly, the dates. In other words, the exceptionally broad time span. 300 to 1650. Even though the definition of the length of the medieval period varies from scholar to scholar, one thing is for sure, 300 AD is not medieval. Late antiquity, late Roman Empire, the even more technical, the dominant, after the Principate, however you want to call it, 300 is too early for a study that is talking about medieval horses. Diluting any result or piece of information that we can gather when it comes to medieval horses of about 400 to 500 years, depending on when exactly we want to start and examine horses and their skeletal remains. The animal is typically measured from the ground to the ridge between their shoulder blades in in units called hands, with one hand equaling 4 inches. Modern horses stand at least 14.2 hands or 4 foot 10 inches. The archaeologists found that English medieval knights led their charges on horses shorter than 14.2 hands tall. Today they would be classified as ponies, not horses. It really feel like this article here is misrepresenting what the original study is doing. This is my first guess. Let's have a look at another article. Attention Hollywood! Medieval war horses were little ponies! <laughs> <laughs> Squire, where is my salt? According to a new zoo archaeological study, medieval war horses may have been a little less slave near, a little more My Little Pony. Contrary to the popular image of gallant steeds as big and powerful, back in ye days of old, many were probably closer to the size of modern day ponies under 14.2 hands or 4 foot 10 inches. After examining the bones of 1,964 horses found between 300 and 1650 AD in England. This article is even worse than the first one. It's pretty much saying the same thing, but now they're adding of their own. They did tell us that the study was carried out in England. Well, if the study was carried out in England and that's the only sample pool, then this does not 
not tell us anything about the medieval period in Europe. These findings suggest that we have to add horse size to the long list of historical inaccuracies in medieval epic films. To help you wrap your head around the mind-boggling difference between a horse-sized warhorse and a pony-sized warhorse, here are some data visualizations created using advanced imagery software MATE advanced imagery software. That's a freaking Photoshop. I can do that in two minutes and I'm not an expert. And it's, oh my gosh, that's so stupid. What a stark contrast, how vastly different our understanding of history might be if we had all grown up with the knowledge that great battles may have been fought on dinky, adorable little ponies. Ready for the face farm. On this video we'll show a lot of period sources, so please watch until the end, but one thing is for sure. Even though some of the horses used by medieval people would indeed fit the modern definition of a pony when it comes to the archaeological maxima, these articles specifically chose to show Shetland ponies. And that's very misleading, because that's not what medieval knights were riding into battle. Okay, in order to preserve our mental sanity, Let's go and check out the actual article proper. We shall then cross-reference it with a plethora of evidence we've got from the medieval period. And yes, I will be reading from medieval Italian, I'll be translating it for you, and I will sound fantastic in doing so, and oh my gosh, my Italian sounds so good. You wouldn't believe it how good my Italian is. Must have been the pizza. <laughs> And a second rather significant point of contrast to that statement is the full plate barding that we have got in museums. Because that does not look like a tiny little pony to me. To that add the sort of carriers they used for horses in the medieval period, all documented, and that is not pony sized. Link in the description to the article I'm about to read from. In Search of the Great Horse at Zoo Archaeological Assessment of Horses from England, AD 300 to 1650. Never had I thought that I would use the word zoo archaeological so many times in my life. Popular culture presents a deep-rooted perception of medieval war horses as massive and powerful mounts. The medieval textual and iconographic evidence remains highly debated. Furthermore, identifying war horses in the zoo archaeological record is challenging due to both a paucity of horse remains relative to other domesticates and the tendency of researchers to focus on osteological size, which makes it difficult to reconstruct in-life usage of horses and activity-related changes. We examine trends in size and shape to explore how the skeletal conformation of horses changed throughout time and reflected their domestic, elite and military roles. Now, I've read this old study a few times actually to really familiarize with what they were doing and even though I think the study is very professionally carried out of course, to summarize what the study is all about, it's trying to assess how the horses developed through a very long period of time and it discovered that in England the samples that they found showed that the horses that they examined tended to be generally small. This is not telling us all horses in medieval England were small and it's not telling us that all horses used by all knights in all military contests were small throughout Europe. It's repeated over and over during the study and they just left it out in all the other articles that are becoming popular and vital right now. Whenever you find bones of horses, yes you can determine the general size of the horse, but you cannot determine what the horse was used for. It's not like it's written on the bones this Muppet was a war horse. Thus, whenever you're trying to assess where ancient horses lie in the allometric spectrum between small ponies and large giraffes, you have to take into consideration that when you examine a bone you don't know if that was a horse used for riding if it was a domestic horse, pack horses, messenger horses, all-rounders, companions, conservation grazer horses, horses used in the tin mines. And even if you were extremely lucky and you were able to pinpoint, hey, 50%, 60% of all of these remains are actually military horses, analyzing their general overall size is still not telling you the size of war horses and destriers used by medieval knights during heavy cavalry shock charges. Why? Because even in a military context, you got the horses used by archers, the horses used by arquebusiers, which by the way we shall see in a moment that I've got documents to back up the fact that horses used by arquebusiers were medium size, the steeds used by light cavalry and finally the stallions used by heavy cavalry. The study proper is not flawed per se, but all of these articles going around now are absolute jokes. They're oversimplifying a very complex matter that is still under research. And yes, I have changed armor because this is the next day. It literally takes me days to film these videos. So don't be Muppets, come and support me on Patreon. I need pizzas to make these. What? 
So how about gathering horse bones from an actual medieval battlefield, because I mean that would definitely help, particularly if it's from a battle where we know that heavy cavalry was an important key factor, that's difficult too, because one thing that is dramatically important to keep in mind is that a war horse was a very expensive commodity, so even when they died they would still gather the horse and use the meat, the bones, nothing was wasted, so it's actually quite difficult to find horse remains on medieval battlefield where war horses died. In the medieval war horse from Davis HRC, page 30F, we find out some very interesting information when it comes to selective breeding in Europe. In Northwest Europe, where the feudal cavalry first emerged, the indigenous horse was, and we have seen, uselessly small. If a horse more suitable for cavalry were to be found, it was essential to import livestock from abroad, and then to practice selective breeding on a very large scale. It says the stock which was imported derived in part from Central Asia, where, early in the first millennium BC, riding horses were bred in the region of the Altai Mountains excavations near Hazirik have revealed remarkable burials with the bodies of horses deep frozen in them. These horses have been divided into four different types, of which the finest, standing 14 or 15 hands high, was heavier than the modern Arabian. Gradually, they spread both east and west. We have medieval documents that tell us which horses, the generally speaking smaller ones, are suitable for armigeri or squires. So again, you find medieval bones in a military context, they might be belonging to squires. Medieval texts also tell us that there is a difference again between the sort of horses used by young nobles and then we have the dextrarios used by the upper class, so heavy cavalry, that needed to be elegant and of noble stature. So in order to give a better and more informed classification of how horses developed in the medieval period, we can divide it into four stages. First, the production in large numbers of horses which, even though they were initially small, were still suitable for cavalry warfare. We are in the middle of the 8th and 11th centuries. Exception to that, the horses used by the Norman cavalry, the Normans, which were instead known for being relatively large, as you can see. But between the middle of the 11th and the end of the 13th century, we have the rapid development of the size of the war horse, so that it could carry armour on its own, as well as a more heavily armoured knight. The 14th and the 15th century is the age of the great horse, which, according to all the documents I found, shit ton of links in the description, we could have horses as tall as 17 or 18 hands. Still very medieval. And then, at the end of the 16th and 17th century we have the decline of the great horse in favour of lighter breeds. As a great example, look at all the statues representing Italian condottieri, who probably had particularly large steeds. Let's have a look at Giovanni Arcuto's horse. We also have a Sicilian by the name of Jordanus who may have lived between the 12th and 13th century that gives us a lot of interesting information on horses. Jordanus explains how to judge the beauty of a horse from the perspective of a medieval man, of course. He says, in the first place the horse's body should have substance and length with all the other limbs in proportion. I'm going to read now from some 16th century descriptions again of horses backed up with imagery and even though since we are in the 16th century technically these are not medieval anymore we are in the Renaissance even from pre-modern era if you want to classify it like that still we can confront them and compare them with 15th century and 14th century representation and you'll see that they look very similar and I mean think about it it's not like the Middle Ages finish and then horses all of a sudden boom become big. Also keep in mind that the average height of a medieval man in Europe at the time was about 160 to 170. Medieval people were a bit smaller, but not that small. Pasquale Caracciolo describes in 1566 the difference between very large horses and smaller ones, and what he says is very interesting. Ma della statura si è da far non piccola differenza, perché i cavalli grossi son buoni solamente nei singolari abbattimenti o in una giornata campale, dove bisognasse di comparire armato di tutte arme, dovendosi combattere con grossa cavalleria. But there is no small difference of the height because big horses are good only in armed confrontations or in a casual battle, when it is necessary to appear armed with all weapons having to fight with large cavalry formations. This statement already confirms what I had anticipated in the beginning of the video, big horses for heavy cavalry. Ne quali casi importa molto che sabbia cavallo di vantaggio, in which cases it matters a lot which horse has an advantage. Boom! ma nelle scaramucce ed in altri mestieri della milizia, dove più leggerezza e prestezza è da richiedersi, loderei piuttosto un cavallo di mediocre taglia. But in the skirmishes and in other professions of war, where more lightness and speed is to be required, I would praise more a horse of medium size. Very interesting. If all the horse bones you found are from a context where we had a skirmish rather than a full-on battle, you'll find smaller horses that doesn't tell us that the entirety of medieval heavy cavalry used ponies. Similar statement from Alessandro Massari in Compendio dell'Eroica Arte di Cavalleria. 
from the 1600s. He proposes that the formation of arquebusiers, horses of mezza taglia, medium height, and stronger horses for heavily armed soldiers. We then have a treaty from 1602 by Antonio Pirro Ferraro that compares the size of a horse to that of a man. Another interesting hint in La Cavalerie Francoise Italienne. John Crusoe in Military Instructions for the Cavalry from 1620 tells us his horse was to be of 15 hand high at the least, strong, swift and well managed. And to give you context when he says his horse it means for heavy lancers and cuirassiers. Robert Ward in Anima Versions of War, 1638. His horse is to be 15 hand high and upwards. Again talking about cuirassiers. The heavier the cavalryman, the bigger the horse. So all in all, what I would say is we still don't know and there is a lot of research in progress as to how big medieval horses were. It is absolutely wrong and incredibly misinforming on a multitude of levels to come up with very reductive statements such as oh medieval horses were ponies, ha ha ha. I hope to have cleared this on this video with the source documents but of course please refer to the links in the description for further details. Thank you very much for watching Noble Ones. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and if you're not yet a member of this community, become a Noble One. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.